Oh, hey guys, I'm back. Just had to pop down the store to grab me some milk. Now I've got a big problemo that needs solving. Season two. Yeah. In case you've forgotten or are new around here, my name is Thomas Randall and I'm trying to create a game from the ground up in the sea because, well, I like pain. So I came back to the code base after a few months off and, well, revisiting old code is about as productive as asking someone with Alzheimer's what they had for breakfast. Just kidding, of course. Um, they forgot to have breakfast. Ah, uh, yes. Luckily, past Randy has blessed us with this highly informative commit message from December 2nd. Thank you, sir. Let's do an inventory check. What do we got going on? in here a player a test down that's <laughs> being hard coded a chunk system strange prototype systems like the inventory skill tree enchanting table crafting uh thing <laughs> and um magical tree chopping oh and don't forget shia labeouf okay all right hear me out how about we get rid of it all eh? now i'm not really getting rid of it of course i'm just he's just he's going to sleep for a little bit <laughs> Now, up until a few weeks ago, the game was going to be procedurally generated, but I realized what's the point in actually procedurally generating a story driven game? Most people are just going to play it once. Um, quick side note, what the fuck is this? Huh? Oh, ah, oh, look how they massacred my boy! So, to save me some time and effort, I'm just going to be hand placing the entire map. And to hand place the entire map, I'm gonna need me a map editor. So I put in some stuff for that. You got this button over here that hand places a ground segment. You can then move that segment around, stuff like that. You know, pretty cool. Actually, no, it's not. Um, there's definitely a better way of doing this, but this is past Randy we're talking about them. Between you and me, he's a bit of a fuckwit. He says with conviction in the present moment, but without realizing that he too has fallen prey to the eternal ticking hands of time. But anyway, moving ahead, let's work on serialization with an S not a Z. Now, I've implemented this about a million times by now, so there's no way anything can possibly... I'm gonna fuck. So the way the map is gonna work, all the necessary level data, like the ground, trees, rocks, etc, etc, get bundled up into this bitch, which gets read from each time you create a new world. But what happens if I change the underlying structure of that data? The game has absolutely no way of deserializing that new version and- yeah, it's boring as fuck. Show me something cool. Now. TLDR, game no longer go crashy crashy. Okay, now that we're all caught up to speed, let's get down the brass tax. What the fuck does this even mean, huh? What is a tax? And why is it brass? I guess we'll never know. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I've got a problem. And it's not that I'm missing my copy of Xi Jinping's The Governance of China. Okay, that's right here. That's not a problem. And you know me, I'm that guy that likes solving problems. <laughs> But this particular problem is a little bit of a doozy. Ages ago, I drew this sexy looking ground pixel art, but when it came time to put it into the game, um, it's flat. How the fuck am I gonna make it hilly? I don't know. It's such a problem. So I did what any good problem solving ape does and uh, fucking ignored it, hoping it would go away. But the tyrannical raid of the bland ground is finally about to reach its end. I've got one word for you. Shadis. Shaders, what are they? Well, every computer has some sort of graphics processing unit. And to keep it simple, the GPU runs a program called a shader. That shader essentially tells the GPU what to show on screen. This right here is a fragment shader for every single pixel in this window, this chunk of code will be run. This shader language is called GLSL. Um, I actually don't know what that stands for. What does it stand for? OpenGL shading language. That kind of makes sense, I guess. Right now it's just returning white for every pixel, but what if we map the red channel to the X value of the current pixel, and then the green value to the Y. Bada bing, bada boom, now we're cooking with electricity. We go zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, and zero, one. Coordinates. Now, I had very little knowledge about shaders going into this. This site, thebookofshaders.com was, oh, goddamn amazing. This is what I love about the internet. You can really just like go on there, Google something, find some fuck off resource on literally anything in the world and just go learn it. It's free knowledge. Me likey. But yeah, the book of shaders has literally taught me everything I need to know. Uh, I worked through about half of it and I'm ready to tackle the problem of trying to recreate this pixel art from the ground up from nothing 
with math. If I can recreate this procedurally, I can literally make it fit to any sort of shape I want. So, you know, I can get them beautiful heels going. So first things first, how do I recreate the shape of these little rocks? Well, there's this thing called the Ver Veroni algorithm. That's definitely how it's pronounced, all right? Don't even fucking happen. You take a set of points, then for each pixel, you calculate the distance to the nearest point. Offset those points with a little bit of randomness, and you can see how you can kind of get some rock shapes out of this. Quick side note, uh, true random number generation in computing is actually uh, not a thing. So let's take a closer look at what this function actually does. Oh, what's that? It's actually just a sine wave with such a large frequency, it may as well be random. Pseudo randomness. Hey! Alright, so next up, these rocks aren't actually taking up the whole texture. I need to give them a little bit of breathing room. This paper right here allowed for exactly that, the calculation of precise borders. We take that bad boy, shrink them down a little, and Bob's your auntie. Now, I don't exactly need all these rocks, uh, only ones above a certain height. So I added in some points to represent the ground level. Now, some of you might recognize this. Um, I used y equals mx plus c. To calculate the line height and get rid of everything above that height. I'd like to take the time to apologize to all my high school math teachers. Um, I'm sorry, you were right, I was wrong. <laughs> Next up, it was time to get some lighting going. Uh, to do this, I literally just ran the old mate Verwon, Ver Veroni again, gave it a little bit of a cheeky offset, masked that bad boy out with the original. It's a bit hacky, but it works. You see, now that I'm looking back on this, um, it looks it looks simple, right? It looks, it looks relatively easy. All of this has taken me four entire goddamn days to figure out up until this point. Moving on though, if you look at the original I drew, you'll notice the top layer of rocks are kind of like poking on the ground a little bit. In the shader, yeah, not so much. I still got the little outline thingy up the top here. Uh, I tried a few things to try and replicate that. Eventually I just settled on removing all of the outlines above the actual line height. It's not the most elegant fix. It can look a bit janky in some areas, but good enough. Now it's time for the most important thing. Color. This is what gives the original drawing um, a lot of punch, a lot of oomph. You can see the rocks getting progressively darker and darker in kind of like a natural way. Uh, getting this right took quite a bit of effort. I ended up getting the current rock's depth and using that to determine what layer it's in with its respective color. And then I also add a bit of randomness to try and like blend the rocks down a bit better. Do yourself a favor and don't look at this, okay? It's, it's literally just nine if statements. If we run this bad boy though, how damn is that looking good? You add all these steps together and that's what you get. I am officially in love with shaders. I am I am rock hard right now. But we ain't done yet though. Time for what I reckon is gonna be the hardest part of this whole thing, is actually taking this shader and putting it into the game. So I'm using this engine called Telescope, which is created by Ryan Flurry, And that right there handles all the rendering stuff with OpenGL. But I gotta sneak the shader code in here somewhere. Eventually I stumbled across this post-process shader, which probably isn't the best place to put it, but it is a place to put it. So first thing I tried to do was get the um, camera and the zoom transforms in the shader working. So it looks like it's actually in like the world space. It took me way too long. I literally trialed and errored the shit out of this. And eventually I got this little chunk of code, which transforms everything perfectly. Ah, uh, yes, let's go. Now, the way I actually got these values into the shader is I passed the camera position and the camera zoom um, in via a uniform, which is something you do when you like initially bind the shader and you can kind of like just pass in data each frame. Now, the next step was to get the vertices passed in. Now, this is a bit of a problem, okay? Uh, GLSL really doesn't fuck with dynamic size loops. You know, it kind of makes sense. I guess it kind of like breaks parallelism of it. I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. But dynamic size loops are unknown though. So we can't loop over all the vertices on screen no matter what we kind of just have to choose a fixed number 64 seems like a good number just like before the vertices get passed into the shader by a uniform we can then take that value loop over all the vertices and figure out all the different heights got that working nicely and next up i just had to bring the rest of the shader in easy peasy lemon squeezy and last but not least got a pixelator okay can't be looking all hd in a pixel art game we don't want that Icky, get out of here. To do that, I just divide the pixel by the zoom, chop off that fucking decimal, and this right here is the final result. That turned out a lot better than I thought it would. I'm sure there's a few more things I can do to polish this little fella up. You know, there's like a few straight pixels in there. It looks a bit icky at some points, but it looks good enough. We've got bigger and brighter things to move on through, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. 
If you enjoyed this video, you like what I'm doing and want to come help support the project, you can head on over to rainy.gg forward slash fund to help a homie out. And if you become a member, you'll be able to get access to all of Arcana's source code. Uh, so that's pretty nifty. But if you don't have the disposable income for that or just can't be asked, no worries at all. Don't blame you. Just leaving a like, subscribing, chucking a comment. Uh, that is absolutely more than enough. Appreciate it. Alrighty, now that all the normies are gone, it's time to talk business. What is this? Huh? Oh, oh, oh. It's been a while, how are you guys doing? First off, apologies for taking such a long ass time to figure out where my priorities lie. I've quit live streaming to help me work more on the game. If you want to know what my thought process is behind that move, uh, you can go and watch this video by Sir Benjamin A. Watt, legend. DLDW though, um, way too distracting, boring as fuck. Waste of my time, waste of your time. It's devlog time though. Um, I've turned back the scale on these puppies, which I'm sure you can see. Uh, there's no green screen, there's no crazy fucking everywhere. It's just me sitting in front of the camera talking about my Ws. The frequency of these guys is gonna be something like uh, fortnightly. I'd ideally like to get it down a weekly, but let's be real, probably not gonna happen. A lot of fucking work. But massive thanks to uh, Ben Awad for kind of like the inspiration getting back into these. Uh, his Doge logs are goddamn excellent, so go sub to him if you haven't already. Now, some of you may be wondering, what's next for the rando? Well, considering I vastly overestimated my abilities to get stuff done last month, nothing new there. Here's what we're gonna be doing for the month of April. Finishing the entire goddamn game!